Act. You're always charged under the Highway Traffic Act. If you've been driving with some, some, some kind of an offense, so under the Highway Traffic Act, HTA, you know, section this, the whole nine yards. Okay, first problem with this is the title. Traffic. What is traffic? And is that you? Traffic by definition is commerce. That's it. It means commerce exclusively. Business, commerce. And what's the only commerce and business the government has any jurisdiction over? Anything performing a function of government. Which is why they're trying to have your insurance papers prove that you confess that you're performing a public service on the roads. Really, well, that's news to me. Okay, that's the first problem. Traffic. We almost don't even need to go any further into that about why the Highway Traffic Act doesn't apply to you. Because if you're not involved in commerce, and you're certainly not involved in commerce as an agent of the government, then it doesn't apply to you. Even if you produce a driver's license, were you performing a function of government at that moment? No. I have a license so I can. If I want to perform a service of government, I have a license to go do it. I can conduct business as an agent of the government and make money using the public roads that we own. Because you've got to remember that the government using our roads is a privilege we extend to them. And that's why they need a license to be on it to do their business. Not the other way around. It's flipped 180 degrees. Who pays for the roads? We do. They're called public roads. The gasoline taxes pay for them. They're paid for from our pocket. And they're ours. So whose permission do we need to be on them? Ours. <laughs> Not them, I'll tell you that. Yeah, exactly. So actually, I have this, well, a friend uh, a friend I know that lives in a country uh, on the other side of the world, actually, and I can't do the accent, so I won't. He, he made that argument in court a number of years back, and I was, I was crying, I was laughing so hard, and he was telling me the story. Because he walked into court, and he basically said, well, he said, uh, he said well, you know, are, are they not the public roads in the general world? Of course they're the public roads. He said, well, well, I'm the public. He said, so why do I need your permission to be on them? And the judge is like, well... And so he turned around one of his buddies in the audience and he said, hey, do I need permission? Uh, hey, is that all right if I'm on the roads? He's like, oh, that's all right with me. He's like, okay, there you have it. <laughs> you know, and uh, dismissed. Judge didn't want anything to do with that. Right? That's how simple the argument was. So that destroys the Highway Traffic Act. That was real simple. How many people have spent years reading that trying to find little fine print where they make the argument, no, 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 see here where it says driving? No, no, if you, your definition is a little bit different than one of Black's Law Dictionary, and that means that I don't have to abide by, you know, it's nonsense, it's the name game. It's the same thing as walking into court and saying, oh, I'm not that name. No one said you were that name. So, there's one of your arguments. So, traffic, I have a traffic doc, that's my first point. Gone. See, I told you we were gonna get more organized around here. Okay, <laughs> how can I prove that government only has jurisdiction uh, against business or anyone conducting business as an agent of the government? Right, I think I've talked about that before. I've never actually given anybody any clues as to why that's the case. They've got this wonderful little thing called the Interpretation Act of Canada. You guys, you've yeah. read the Interpretation Act? It's where they redefine all the words used in their acts. Right? Where pink is gray and blue is purple and, uh, you know, you're an agent to the government. That's where all that stuff is redefined. The definitions of the words used in their acts. So that's usually the best place to find evidence, um, even though we don't really need it. But if you look in the Interpretation Act, and I believe it's if you look up the definition of the word business, it goes into a big, long explanation, you know, any, anyone performing construction, this, that, da, 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 and at the very end it says, when performing a function of government. Well, that's great. When am I performing a function of government? That's the only business that the government has jurisdiction over, is business. It's theirs, their business. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. My business is my business, and their business is their business, and it says so in their own law books. So they have to get you to do their business to get jurisdiction over you. And a license does that. But it doesn't. We talked about that last time because you might have a license, but, well, I'm sorry, I'm not on duty. 
I don't have an existing contract where the government's been paying me to transport goods on the roads. They're claiming that there is one. I'd like to see it. And where's the wrong place to make that argument? In court, after you did nothing for six weeks except show up and get pissed off at the judge. Okay. Your two are gone now. <laughs> Performing a function of government, point three, you apply for it. The document has got your signature on the driver's license. You even did a little competency test. You went out, yeah, okay, you can turn left three times, here's the license. Go to town, right? So now government is assuming liability for damages you might cause when you're performing a function of government. That means you have to abide by their rules because they got underwriters, right? Well, if you're going to be acting as an agent for us when you're using the roads, we want to make sure you're being a little safe out there because if you cause damages, we got to pay for all that. So you got to abide by all these highway traffic dock regulations. Oh, okay. And you apply for it. Point three gone. Okay. So who is the government agent? You know what? I'm going to skip that one for now. Because I want to draw the triangle again. It's, it's something's going to click for you guys. Um, so how to start driving and potentially be unmolested by agencies of government. Um, give notice. Give notice. Give notice. Give notice. Give notice to the agency of government that's most likely to be responsible for whatever should befall you when you get on the highways and one of their agents accosts you. Good place to start is the Attorney General, right? They love me. Should you put the notice on your vehicle? Could you just absolutely? That one thing? But that's not a good place to start. Okay. You don't want to give notice when you're at the side of the road and you've been pulled over. That's like giving notice when you show up in court, mm -hmm. because that's what it is when you're pulled over at the side of the road. The minute they initiate contact, you're now holding court. That is administrative process. Okay. Okay. Um, the plate that I use, and I think I've shown it before, and I'll grab it here again in a second. Um, is evidence of a fee schedule that's in place. That's where I want them to know who that is in that, in that car, that truck, that vehicle, driving. I'll use all their words. I'm driving a vehicle on the roads. <coughs> There's no jurisdiction there. Um, so you contact the government in advance, right? You say, hey, I'm going to be accessing the public roads, which, which is my right. If you're claiming I don't have the right to access the public roads without permission from you, I'm going to give you 10 days to provide me with some evidence and facts that I don't have that right. Right? You won't hear back, especially if you send it registered mail. So you default them. And included in that notice, you might want to put a fee schedule in there. It says, by the way, in the event you don't respond, which you're not going to, I'm going to put this fee schedule in here, and I'm going to put a fee on everything that you do to me when your agents harass me on the road. So that now, um, I haven't had a chance to do this yet, but I've got an invoice book I carry around with me now. And I've been waiting to give up my first invoice the same way they invoice us, right? You can get the three copy ones from like Staples where, oh, they pulled me over, okay, well, five minutes, that's the first million bucks. <coughs> so by the time he gets to the window, you could already have your first ticket written out and hand it to him. Why not? That's what they do to us, isn't it? Yeah, not the original though. Oh, I think the original, the yeah, I don't care. The yellow copy. Yeah, yeah, exactly, that's only their nonsense. <laughs> Think of, think of this one. Um, think of the license plate or the plates, whatever you put on it as. Uh, it's my flag. Exactly. Like in America. It's my law, flag it on my vessel. It's the private flag property. Tells you exactly whose law is supreme on that vessel. Yeah. And that's mine. I'm sovereign in my own property. In fact, for the time being, I'm existing in that property, which is mine. Hand them a copy of the Petty Trespass Act. You're trespassing on my property the minute you touch it. When I'm not in a car and I'm walking around the sidewalk, this is my property. That's trespass to the body, right? Trespass to private property. Private property is your car. How do they know that? Well, mine says private property right on the plate. I mean, for the, the, the identification numbers of my fee schedule. So anyways, where did I get those numbers from? I made them up. We do that. Man creates things. We just create things. Just make it up. I just, I'm just making shit up right now in my brain. It's great. Um, so you send notice along with the fee schedule, right? And give them time to reply. Contact the Department of Transportation, the DOT, contact them. Some people I know have actually gotten DOT plates. They've just made an application with the DOT, they got a DOT plate. I don't know anything about that. I don't, I'm not, I don't like that idea. I don't like putting anything of theirs on my property. Yeah, period, just again, for liability issues. And that's something I want to actually, I want to write that down because the li we don't speak with liability enough. Hmm.
So you sent notice to the government you're going to be accessing the public roads as you have every right to do in your private property that has no liens against it because you bought it cash. You own all the equity. When you own the equity, you are king. You're sovereign of what you own the equity over. That's why I don't would not do a lease. It's in the lease agreement. You have to insure it with the, through uh, public insurance. It's a right in the lease agreement. You're well, already violating fancy long-term rental yeah. agreement. Yeah. yeah, so you're already violating your lease the minute you, you try to drive around with your own private plate on it. Um, so they don't reply. After 10 days, you, you want to give 10 days. I mean, uh, nine days is good to, what is it, uh, three days for them to get it, three days for them to reply, and then three days for it to be sent back to you in a day of grace. 10 days is a pretty standard amount of time in commerce. Some people give 21, some people give 30, I don't think it's necessary. As long as you default them and send them notice of their default, Send them notice, send it back to them, fax it, register a mail, and walk, go down to the legislative building and walk into the office and give them copies of everything to the staff at the front counter that are required to be there to take material from you and say, I'd like to drop this off with the Attorney General. Could you please make a photocopy and stamp it received? Well, I've got lots of them in there where I've gone down and done that. I like to do it because just to tell people, if, if I'm going to tell somebody to do something, I've done it. And I've shown you guys all the paperwork. Believe me, if I'm talking about something on camera too, I've done it. So now you just put your own plate on. This is uh, my spare. Right? Because I like to be fancy, I want to be the first one of all my friends that had a uh, color plate. They all had just numb numbers. I wanted to get my own Irish flag color plate. So we found a place in Winnipeg that does up these little things. I think it was called, well, never mind, I'm not going to use the name. But anyways, I'll give it up privately. So it costs almost nothing, and it's metal. These are the numbers I created when I told the government I was going to be driving using this plate. <clears throat> when you guys see these letters, and that stands for Dean Christopher David of the Clifford family, does that have any legal effect of any kind? No. It just means that those are the numbers I gave the government to say that when you see all these numbers, you know it's me. And I've got not for hire, well I can't be involved in commerce, I've got private property, that's pretty plain too. There's my fee schedule. This obviously doesn't say Manitoba on it. It's not a government plate. So it makes everything pretty clear now. So now your fee schedule, this is your notice of damages. Before they even pull you over, this is your notice and that's why you want that on. Okay. Right? So your first action after they pull you over would be to file a PPSA uh, then the following day, followed up by a Queen's Bench lawsuit by the end of the week. As fast as possible. Bam. The same way that they, they do that to you guys. Except, no, I wouldn't do it by the end of the week because there's a process that I, I want to teach people to do with that kind of thing that's going to make it lock solid before they even walk into a Queen's Bench. Because what's the rule with court? Don't go there unless you've already won. You've already won. The only time you should ever go to court. Okay, notice you'll be accessing the public rules. That one's gone. Fee schedule number plate. Just covered that one. Uh, put anything you want in the fee schedule. I don't care. I mean, keep the numbers. You, you can't. You can't find somebody a trillion dollars because they just pulled you over. That's frivolous and vexatious. That's pretty frivolous and vexatious. But I really don't think a million bucks is out of the question. To be honest with you, I mean, a million bucks really isn't even a lot of money nowadays, especially by the time Obama gets done with the economy and everything else. I mean, that might buy us a loaf of bread by October. But a million bucks is not unreasonable, right? People get killed in traffic stops. My life is worth at least a million dollars. Every time they pull us over, they're actually endangering our lives. Yeah, I take that very that. seriously. It's more than just the harassment. It's true. Right? They are endangering your life. They might approach you with guns drawn like they've done in the States because you've got your own plate on and accidentally shoot you. That happens. Right? So I've got an accidental death thing in my, uh, in my fee schedule too. That by, for, for whatever reason, if, if I get killed, even though it wasn't a direct action by the police when I get pulled over, but as a result of them detaining me, it leads to my death. There's a rather nasty fee attached to that for my untimely demise that's owed to my heirs and assignees of my estate. That's all set up already, it's all done. Uh, so that's the fee schedule and the number plate. So, yeah, honestly guys, it's like, have fun creating stuff. Make your own stuff up. We made the government. We can make anything. We can make our own new government. We make the rules.